Today, I will be making an aluminum air battery that uses carbon brushes as cathode and can produce an output of around 12 volts DC like any normal battery. As you can see here, I'm using the same battery case as I did in my previous air battery video. This is because I want to compare the performance output of this battery with the previous one for the same area of cross section of the battery because the previous battery contained the steel wire rolls which I've replaced with the carbon brushes this time. Please note that the previous video link for the air battery and the 3d print stl files will be provided in the description and now i have these many carbon brushes and from this stack i'm going to choose this one you see the size and shape now this battery case has eight cell slots and for getting an overall output of 12 volts dc my target is to fill in the cathode area with as many carbon brushes as possible now a single cell can fit in a max of 13 brushes making a total of 104 brushes to completely fill up this battery next comes the binding of the 13 brushes together as one terminal for which i am going to simply use a zip tie Next comes this nickel strip that I will cut off of a particular size as you can see and finally place it in between the brush spacings. This is necessary for the current collection process. So that's it. We have the first carbon cathode. Now just as a safety precaution I'm going to test a single carbon brush as one complete cathode and an aluminium plate as anode with potassium hydroxide once again as the electrolyte. This is just to collect the readings to know its performance for a single cell. Here the meter is showing negligible voltage in millivolts and I'm dropping potassium hydroxide drop by drop and you can see the rise in voltage on the meter screen although the display is in negative so I am interchanging the wires to get it to positive and zoom it in and here you can see the close-up that i have crossed one volts dc and the more i add the potassium hydroxide the more voltage you can see on the display and we have just crossed 1.4 volts and a max of 1.45 volts dc moving on to the current testing here you can see a small dip of aluminium plate gives 0 0.017 and a big dip gives 0 0.026 and then 0.032 amperes so finally here i've completed the construction of all the eight carbon cathodes and these are all the final cleaned up aluminium plates for each cell so here i'm cutting off the red wires for the aluminium plates done finally connecting the red wire with the plate after completing these anodes and cathodes, it is finally time to fit in all these in this battery case. So here I'm placing the aluminium plates which are the anode here in their respective negative slots and the last aluminium plate contains the black wire which represents the overall negative output. Please note that the 3D print STL file link has been provided in the description. Now moving on to the installation of the carbon cathode where the zip tie knot is acting as a separator for keeping distance between the aluminium plate and the carbon cathode to prevent short circuit. So here I'm soldering all the cells together in series to get a higher voltage output and after that it comes time for testing the connectivity with multimeter. So here I'm going to start with the continuity check. So all the connections are fine and finally it is time to connect this final output positive terminal and we already have this overall negative wire connected. So the air battery is finally fully complete and all that is left is to pour in the electrolyte and test it. Now moving on to the making of electrolyte, here I am using this well cleaned glass. I am filling in some distal water. Make sure that the glass was very clean and not contaminated at all. Next, I have this potassium hydroxide packet. So cutting the top, a clean spoon, plastic. Trying these many flakes and go. Let's give it a little more. In some time, this is going to get dissolved completely. The potassium hydroxide is completely dissolved now, as you can see. 
it's time to connect the meter wires and i've already pointed my meter to the voltage measurement mode finally i'm going to use this well cleaned syringe okay i also have to find out how much ml of this liquid or electrolyte each cell is going to get filled with so i have to fill it completely one more thing guys if you want to get this 3d print design link will be provided in the description for the stl files so guys here something really bad happened i was recording everything and because of the temperature rise the camera turned off automatically and i was like speaking and everything the voltage went to a max of around 11.37 volts and now it has reduced to 11.18 and now i have set it to high temperature recording 11.14 it is i'm really disappointed with this that the camera turned off anyways what's done is done let's try this fan and hope it works okay nothing no power at all there is a high probability that i should increase the level of potassium hydroxide per cell so here i'm going to add one flake per cell okay actually that was smaller so i added one more this is bigger one done and here you can see the increasing voltage at least i have captured this i seriously hated that feature although it is very important for the camera protection oh yeah done oh 11.38 volts Eleven point three nine, eleven point five eight. That is eleven point six. We are doing here pretty good. Now let's finally try our fan, one of the fans that I usually do, and see if it works this time. Yeah, you see, now it is working by increasing the number of potassium hydroxide pellets. Nice. How about these lights? Whoa, it worked. So the test is complete and now I'm going to show you something very important. Here I'm going to test the voltage of individual cell. So the first cell is this one. Here we can see that the voltage is 1.14 volts after complete 12 hours. Moving on to the next one. And here we have around 373 millivolts. Next, 1.11 volts, 600 millivolts. Yeah, around 1 volt. Next. What is happening here? This is in negative. I'm not sure how, although it should have been in positive. This cell the polarity has changed. I can't believe what has happened. You see, the aluminium plate is uh, showing positive sign, and uh, this graphite plate is showing negative sign. It is 1.2 volts. So this test is really important for me. And here you can see again we are back to normal. 1 volts. Here the aluminium plate is negative as it should be. I'm losing the contact. Yeah, 1 volts. And finally the last one. That is showing the highest. Highest and uh, please note that highest in reverse. Again the aluminium plate should be negative. But here according to the voltage reading it is showing positive. And now it is showing 1 volts in positive after I have reversed uh, the polarity of my meter wires. So the overall output voltage that we will be getting now, let's measure that also. Here we have 3 volts, which means uh, the individual cells are cancelling each other out. And now I've taken out all the plates and I'm going to show you something very important now. So here as you can see that uh, the aluminium plate is still alive. It is not dead or damaged, it is still alive. But uh, the carbon plate, that is almost damaged. You see, it's next to the powder stage. And I'm going to show you that practically. Here I have uh, one broken cathode. And you see, it's withering away. So guys, here I've done several changes. Mainly to the cathode. Here you can see, I've used less number of brushes. And these brushes are the same ones. 
I'm reusing them. I've bored a hole through these using my drill press and I've placed this bolt and this nut to hold this piece steady. And uh, I've placed the brushes like this to increase the surface area that is going to get in contact with the electrolyte. And these uh, brushes are going to be reused again for the battery backup test. Now guys, I believe there is some issue with the 3D print. So I'm going to use these plastic cups on this wooden base for testing. So I've placed all the plates and now all that is left is to place a separator in between to prevent any possible short circuit. So same separators as before. Done. Now the color of the electrolyte has changed because again I'm going to reuse the old one. So all the cups are now filled with the electrolyte and now finally it is time to test it. So now I'm going to do the final connection for this light bulb and after that I'm going to turn on the clock. Wow, this time it is so bright, much more powerful than before. Turn it on and go, moving to the time lapse mode. So guys, after completing my sleep, I've come back and uh, the lights are still glowing. So this is what I was talking about, the 12 hours backup. It is still working. Such a nice thing about the air battery and initially it didn't work with uh, this uh, previous case. Let's disconnect and turn on all the lights. It's not properly visible. Uh, initially it didn't work uh, with this case. I think I somehow damaged it. This is what I thought while so trying it with a uh, separate cups this is going to prevent the electrolyte from getting in contact with the electrolyte of the other cell and thus uh, preventing any possible short circuit here you can see so there is no problem with these types of carbon plates as i stated before these are fine 100 percent fine and they're working good also the aluminium plates are also not consumed and uh, there's one thing that is really important for all of us to notice that i'm reusing both the aluminium plates plus uh, the carbon plates and these were also left for 12 hours before and after that these have phased another 12 hours making it an overall of 24 hours i just want to take a good look of the condition so the electrolyte is uh, also not fully consumed but the lights got dim maybe because the concentration of the potassium hydroxide might have decreased because of continuous power consumption from these individual cells so that's it hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it and uh, let me know about that in the comment section members video will be coming soon and it is very important it contains uh, several key factors so you must watch it and uh, see you in the next one bye bye next a lot of love and thanks to my paid members for their additional support also a big recommendation for all to check my 3d prints page and my socials for even more fun links are in the description and lastly subscribe this channel and share my videos with your friends for a stronger community best regards electron